I'm Emily Green. Hi, I'm Tika Minami. Hi, my name is Megan Watson. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to talk about uh, visual anthropology as applied anthropology and I'm going to teach you a brief history of visual anthropology. Photos have been dominant tools to teach about visual anthropology. However, today uh, there are various kinds of um, various kinds of visual dissemination, such as uh, movies, documentaries, animation, posters, um, yeah, theaters, and so on. And one of the the founder of visual anthropology is Margaret Mead, and she brought anthropology into the home of Americans. And another example of the founder of visual anthropology is Franz, Franz Boas, who took photos and reconstructed scenes of scenes to express cultures. So visual anthropology can be a way to teach people about social issues and cultural issues that may clash and play an important role in the history of that society or the history of that culture. So part of that is the history because in terms of understanding how the story is told, you have to understand who's writing the story or who's telling the story and how that's framed to the audience. The cost and benefits of doing visual anthropology as a tool for disseminating knowledge. Consider the following. Have you ever played a game of telephone where the original meaning of the message has been completely warped by the time it gets to the end of the line? Much in the same way, visual anthropology frames things only in one light. On the other hand, when collaboration with local communities is involved in projects, uh, visual anthropology can be a great tool for disseminating knowledge. Usually the person writing or filming the documentary film, or even drawing the poster or taking the photograph, is considered the expert or the authority on the information that is being taught. But Hannah, what makes you the authority? That's an interesting question, Emily. And I might ask, what gives you the power to question my authority? Because you're only one person and you only have one perspective. Therefore, you can't speak about things that you haven't lived. Another limitation to doing visual anthropology is that the image only captures what the author or filmmaker would like you to see. Hey! Good evening, and thank you for joining us. My name is Megan Watson. Tonight we bring you breaking news from Cairo. For this story, we turn to my colleague Emily Green. Emily? Thank you. A few months ago, Egypt underwent a revolution. During this period, sensitive footage was leaked revealing rampant police brutality. Chico, would you please roll that clip? A single image from this reel, the woman in the blue bra, became the defining image of this movement. The image became the symbol of the crisis and was repurposed and harnessed as a tool for empowerment. Many people painted murals or paintings with their own script or narration, shifting the power from the police to the people. But this isn't the only occasion. Right here in America, it's occurring with the Occupy movement. And here is my co-anchor, Megan Watson, to tell us more about this. Thank you, Emily. Similar scenes were captured on film at the Occupy Wall Street movement on the UC Davis campus. Images of police officers pepper spraying peaceful protesters spurred responses from viewers across the country. In an attempt to draw attention to the obscenity of the abuse, a blog on a popular website, Tumblr, 
isolates the police officer and photoshopped images ranging from Disney to Monet. Oh, I didn't see you there. I was hoping to talk to you today a little bit about the methods that we use in visual anthropology. For example, I just took a picture. That's an excellent method for displaying visual and cultural means that can tell a story in a single image. Today, we, were, we have been using a camcorder, which provides a moving picture of information to display and teach about visual anthropology. However, there are many different methods involved, as mentioned before. Some of the methods we did today um, required multidisciplinary knowledge, such as film and technology use. Some of the methods we used in putting together this film required editing and computer technologies used to put together different scenes in a storyboard format. In some conditions, posters and photographs will show narratives or certain dialogues that explain the story and add context. 